Welcome. In this video we're going to look at how Inventor integrates into Ringel PLM. Ringel PLM offers a whole suite of capabilities. In this video we're going to focus on MCAT data management, Inventor data management, complete bomb management, visualization and a little bit on release and change management. Ringel CAD integration offers a whole set of capabilities and is specifically aimed at supporting concurrent engineering in a globally distributed environment, providing enterprise access to design data, to inventor data, supporting heterogeneous CAD, so it doesn't really matter whether you use Inventor, AutoCAD, SolidWorks, NX or Crea Biometric. And CAD integration integrates into PLM data and processes, bill of materials management, visualization, release and change management, but also downstream applications like technical publications and manufacturing planning. If we're looking at the key features of the integration that we have for Inventor into Windchill, we offer embedded menus in Inventor, so you don't have to leave the Inventor application to interact with Windchill. We offer secure and concurrent data sharing, check-in, check-out, and access of data in a controlled environment. We manage all the main Inventor file types, like assemblies, parts, presentations, managing all the dependencies between these files, like internal and external references. We also manage iPart factories and iAssembly factories. And we use native Inventor icons in the UI to easily distinguish between things like sheet metal parts and standard solid model parts. And we can expose Inventor mass properties in Winchell as well. We have some very specific PLM capabilities to support complex operations like Save As and Rename. We can also bidirectionally map attributes between Windchill and Inventor. And it is fully integrated into downstream PLM processes, via change management, bomb management and visualization. If we're looking at more of the advanced features that we have with the integration, Windchill offers the virtual file system. This is a capability where you can expose Windchill in the Windows Explorer environment and browse Windchill as if it is just a folder in Windows Explorer. We can also manage Inventor templates in Windchill. We also have bomb management, support for reference parts, support for phantom parts. We can map item numbers to windchill line numbers. We can also manage assembly and part factories. And we can also support Inventor large assembly mode, like express mode. We also support the content center, so files that are generated with content center are automatically managed inside windchill. And we also support some of the more advanced Inventor tools like frame generator and the cable and harness module. It is fully integrated with the Windchill visualization, so we can look at drawings, assemblies, presentations. We could do visual reporting against this. We could do measurements, markups, we could watermark things. We can also create animations, do interference analysis. And all the visualization data is automatically generated by the Windchill visualization service. In the demonstration video, we're going to look at the integration between Windchill and Inventor, a little bit on release management, and how Inventor CAD data can add to the Windchill bomb management capabilities. Here we are looking at the Windchill Workgroup Manager. This is the application that integrates Inventor with Windchill. And from here we can start to create some new CAD documents, some new Inventor parts. We can use some templates that are stored in Windchill to generate the initial parts in Inventor. And for instance, this one is called my main bracket. We can also fill in some required metadata so maybe we want high grade materials and we can open the file directly in Inventor from the Workgroup Manager. In Inventor we have an integrated Windchill ribbon that will help us with the interaction with Windchill. So from here we can open files, we can check in, we can check out, we can update files, etc. Windchill also manages uh, property information and it writes that back to the I properties in Inventor. So for instance up here we can see the name that we typed in Windchill, we can see the part number that Windchill has allocated, we can see the revision of the file. We can also see the current lifecycle state of InWork. Windchill also writes a number of custom properties that we can use in things like title blocks, etc. So let's create some geometry for this. And now that we are ready with our file, we can check it into Windchill. We do that using the Windchill Worker Manager ribbon. We have an auto check-in or we have a custom check-in. The custom check-in gives me some extra options. So for instance up here I can choose the folder location where my new file is going to be stored in Windchill. In this case I'm going to put it into the test station subfolder. 
I can also add some check-in comments. Initial design. Mintu will now store the data in the database and it will also automatically allocate a bill of materials component, what we call a windshield part. The windshield part will be used in the product structures and from product structures we can derive bills of materials. Other ways of creating new files is by just simply using the file new in Inventor and up here I've got a number of windshield templates that I can choose from so from here for instance I can create a new windshield part and then in a similar process we can now start to populate the property information we can give it a name sub bracket and when we save the file it will now allocate the number and in a similar way we can start to create our geometry now that we are happy with our design we can check it in and I can simply choose auto check in if I don't want to specify any folder location or any check in comments other ways of working with inventor geometry is by reusing existing data that already sits in the system and for this we can either use browse or we can use search so I can use my working manager interface and browse the containers and folders that I have available to me so from here for instance, I can look at the cat data I can look at my suspension folder and from here I can find a part or an assembly and directly open it up in Inventor. Now the assembly is opened in Inventor. Another way of searching for information is by using Winchell search. We can use keyword searches. We can also use saved searches and dedicated searches. So up here for instance I can search for all the Inventor drawings that I have access to. This will give me a list of drawings and from this drawing I get little previews that show me what the drawing looks like and if I'm interested in a particular component then from here we can directly open this up in Inventor the drawing is now opened in Inventor another way of searching for information is by using the Windchill Virtual File System the Windchill Virtual File System is a folder that exposes Winchill, the Winchill database and the Winchill content and you can just use Windows Explorer to browse the Winchill database so from here I can go and look at my workspace these are the things I'm currently working on I can also look at the common space these are the things that I have access to as a user so here we have our Inventor and AutoCAD data and from here I can browse the different uh, folders that I have access to up here we see some basic windchill information so we see the file names the document name the document number but also I can say you know show me maybe the little thumbnails and then from here we can pick a component I can just double click it and it will open it up in Inventor so let's go back to our workspace in the meantime while I've been creating new files and opening files windchill has populated my workspace with all the data that's required to be able to regenerate the files in Inventor so let's start from fresh, let's remove the information from my workspace. Now the workspace is linked back to the application, so as I'm removing stuff from my workspace, it will also remove it from the Inventor application. Another way of accessing information is by using the windshield product structure. That's the bills and materials that we're going to develop using Inventor. And up here I've got a product structure for a rotary pump assembly. We have visualization that's been generated by Windchill and there's a direct link between the visualization and the structure. But in the structure we can start to expose the related information. Up here we can see the inventor files that are associated at every level within the bill of materials. So for instance up here we can see that we have a drawing for the pump base and by simply selecting open in Creo View we can use Windchill's lightweight visualization tool to open and look at the drawing. If we want to work on one of these assemblies, I can go to the details page. Up here we can also see some of the metadata that Winchell extracts from the inventor data. So up here for instance we can see the mass property information. And I can directly open this assembly in Inventor. Winchell will now add the required dependencies into my workspace and it will open the assembly in my inventor application. Now if I also want to work with the drawings I simply go back to my workspace and from here I can pick up my assembly and say add any related information to my workspace and up here we have the option to pick up any of the drawings which are automatically added when I choose this particular action 
but if I want to I can add any drawings of any components that I want to work with and automatically add these to my workspace. Using the workspace we can now open up these drawings so we have our rotary pump assembly drawing let's open that up. We also have our exploded view let's open that one up and also we have the presentation that's used by the exploded view and we open all these up in Inventor in a single session. So up here we can see the different pieces of data that we're going to work with. Now I'm going to modify the assembly and for instance we need to create a new component a locking ring and we're going to add that to the assembly. There's different ways of doing that. In this case I'm going to create a new component in session. Winter will automatically allocate a number to it if we want to we can choose any of the templates and we can now create our new component. We give it a location and next we start to build the geometry. Now that we have modeled our new component we also may want to provide some of the property information. So for instance I may want to give it a proper name so we will call it locking ring. Venture will automatically populate the part number when it's saved to the database. So let's save our changes. If we now look at the property information we'll see that Winchell has allocated the part number, the revision as well as the status information. Finally we also want to add a, a bolt to the locking ring so that we can fix it to our rotary pump. And in this example I'm going to use a part uh, from content center. So we can use a particular specification so let's say we use a bolt GBT31 and we place that in the assembly. Now because it's a content center part, Winchell will automatically check it into my database in a designated folder. We have now created a modification to our assembly where we've created the locking ring part and we've added a part from our content center library. Now let's make sure that we save our changes. So first of all we save our assembly. Now Winchell knows that I haven't checked out the assembly yet so it offers me the option to check out the assembly on the fly. Once the assembly is checked out, I can store my modifications. The progress bars tell me where I'm at. But obviously we also now have to update our, our drawings. So we have our drawing up here that's updated. That has also automatically added my locking ring and my new bolt to my parts list table. Using the PC windshield ribbon, I can check it out. So that I can store my modifications. We can just save this simply to the database now. Now we also want to update our exploded view. Now to do that we may want to make a modification to our presentation. Again we save our changes. And we want to update our exploded view drawing as well. Now finally we want to commit all our changes back into Windchill so that other people can see the modifications that I've made. We do that using the check-in and either I can do the custom check-in or the auto check-in. I'm going to choose the custom check-in and in this case I can now assemble all the parts and files that have been modified and check them in in one go. We can provide some check-in comments and commit our changes to Windchill. So let's go to a standard browser and have a review of what we've done inside Windchill. So we made a change to our rotary pump assembly. Let's have a look at the details. Up here we can see our preview thumbnail of what our new design looks like. I can also see the metadata that's been automatically extracted from Inventor and has been updated. I can also have a look at any related objects. So for instance we can see the drawings that we've modified. So I can have a look at my exploded view drawing. We get our visualization for that. 
by clicking on the thumbnail we can open up the visualization in our preview application and we can look at a preview of the drawing. We can also go to our structure and our structure has now been updated to reflect the latest changes. So up here we can see our locking ring that we've added. We can also see our bolt that we have added. Now that our locking ring is finished, we want to release the information in Windchill. When it's released, nobody can modify it until the component is revised. To do this, we can use different processes. Windchill offers full change management, but also a more simplified CAD dedicated process called Promotion Request. In this case, I'm going to create a promotion request. Up here, we can put a due date in here. And up here, we can collect the information that we want to release. Our target state is going to be released. And we have a number of processes that we can choose from. These are just examples. I'm going to use the promotion request approval process. This involves potentially one or more people to do the sign-off. In this case, the sign-off is done by myself. So we have an approver, which is myself, and we have a reviewer, which is myself. As soon as the promotion request starts, the path information is now under review. Also, when we look at the CAD document, the CAD information, that's currently in an under review state. At my home page, I'm getting tasks that I need to perform. We get a review ta task and we have an approved task. Let's first review the information. Up here we can see the tasks that are running in the system. We can also look at the objects that are released by this promotion request. And from here I can look at the information. For instance, I can open it up in my lightweight Creview application to make sure that the design is correct. If I'm happy with the review, I've put in the details to say that I've reviewed the task. The next is I need to approve the part. So we have an approved promotion request task. Now this is a more important task. So up here not only can we review all the information, we can leave our comments. But now we can choose whether we approve, reject or send the model back for rework. I'm happy with the design, so I'm going to complete the task. If we now go back to our rotary pump assembly, then now we can see that our locking ring is now released. Thank you for watching this demonstration. In this demonstration, I've shown you a little bit about the Windchill Inventor integration that we have with Windchill PDM Link. I've given you a brief introduction into release management and a little bit on generating bills and materials and polished structures in Windchill. Thank you.